Welcome everyone and welcome to today's webinar, See Data Core ePayments in Action. I am Jermel Quilopo and I will be I will be your moderator for today. I am a partner marketing manager here at Invoice Pay. But before we get started, I'd like to go over some house rules just so that everyone is acquainted with your um, options that are on your right side. So today we have two subject matter experts. We have Jeff Cole from DataCore and we have Jim Wright from Invoice Pay. Um, I'm going to ask Jeff. Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about your background there at DataCore? Sure. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining today. Uh, my name is Jeff. I work on the strategy team at DataCore. And one of my main objectives is making the payment process easier for our customers. We've got an integrated credit card product that a bunch of you guys are on and excited to roll out this e-payment solution to uh, to really help you automate your accounts payable process. Um, Jim, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, good morning and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Jim Wright. I'm the vice president of sales for Invoice Pay. A uh, little background on me, I've been in the, the procure to pay space, uh, kind of really dating back to the early 2000s. Um, and uh, in and around 2013, I was working with uh, an invoice automation company. Uh, and I actually partnered with Invoice Pay uh, to round out that procure to pay continuum uh, by automating payments. Uh, and about a year and a half ago, I had an option to actually come on board and join the team here at Invoice Pay. And I'm super excited to be here with you today uh, to provide you with an overview of the, the Data Core ePayment solution. Thank you guys both for your introductions. And before we get into the nitty gritty of the presentation, kind of want to put a question out there. So a fun fact, can each of you folks tell us, so Jeff and Jim, can you tell us a winter fun fact before we start the presentation in the webcast? Sure, so before I started at DataCore, I was an M&A lawyer and I spent Christmas working 16 hours. Uh, so very happy to, <laughs> Very happy to be on the data core side of things instead of at a law office on Christmas. <laughs> that That's definitely crazy. sounds better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jim? So, so uh, I'll actually give like a, an actual winter fun fact. Um, when, uh, <laughs> when my kids were young, I got them into to ski racing and uh, I actually became a certified USSA ski coach. Uh, so uh, I, I love, uh, love going fast and, and, uh, and all that sort of fun stuff. That sounds amazing. Thanks, guys. So now we're going to get into the nitty gritty. You folks are here because you folks want to see Data Core ePayments in action. However, some of you folks did attend our first webinar, but some people haven't. So we kind of wanted to go over a little bit of what some people may have missed from that first webinar. So, Jeff, can you tell us a little bit about Data Core ePayments and how Invoice Pay and Data Core have partnered up? Sure. So, quick history on, on the ePayments product. Uh, for years, DataCore has been hearing that accounts payable is a pain point. Uh, it takes four hours to get checks out the door on a Friday. There's different processes for checks, ACH, credit card, wire. Um, so I went around, I visited somewhere between 10 and 15 customers in person, had calls with a bunch of others, uh, gathered a list of pain points, reviewed their current AP processes, and then went out to the market to see what was out there. And Envoice Pay offered a pretty comprehensive solution. Um, it automates the, the latter portion of the AP process from the approval workflow forward to the actual payment of, of payables. Um, and started talking to the folks there like Jim and Jermel, uh, really hit it off and have developed this awesome integration in, in DataCore ZRP that works with Envoice Pay and we've called it DataCore ePayments. Awesome, and we are so happy to be partnering up with you folks there as well. And so a lot of people have heard about Invoice Pay, may know what we do, but Jim, could you tell us a little, can you tell people that are on the webcast right now who we are and what we do? Sure, absolutely. Um, so Invoice Pay, we, um, we've been in business for a little over 10 years. Um, we are actually an independent um, subsidiary of a company by the name of Fleet Corps, um, which I'll mention in a, in a moment. Um, but um, as far as, as, as invoice pay goes, um, you know, we have a couple of really interesting statistics. We've, we've had an incredible growth rate year over year uh, since the, the day that we were founded back in, in, in uh, about 10 years ago. Um, we do have an exceptional customer retention rate, which I think is really remarkable. Um, when you look at the industry as a whole, we actually do have the highest retention rate out of, out of any company in the payment industry of over 99%. Uh, which is really unique also because our contracts come without terms. 
Uh, our customers can come and go at any time, but uh, but they don't. They really like our our services and our solutions, um, and we have an extremely high customer satisfaction rate. Um, as it does relate to Fleet Corps, you know, it's kind of funny. Fleet Corps is a very big organization. They're a $2.3 billion organization publicly traded. Um, a lot of organizations or companies, people don't really know who Fleet Corps is. I always say it's the, the biggest secret on Wall Street because um, what they really specialize in is, is B2B payments. And uh, we happen to be collectively the largest commercial issuer of MasterCard in all of North America. So um, it was a really unique marriage uh, with us being acquired by Fleet Corps because it brings the, the brick and mortar strength uh, of Fleet Corps. Uh, with our technology and our services uh, that they really wanted to to bring into their portfolio to help really uh, manage the growth of their business. Awesome. Thanks, Jim. So a lot of people here that are on this webinar have challenges within their AP system or are experiencing some challenges in their AP system. And so, um, Jeff, could you tell us a little bit about how and why um, a lot of the data core customers that are online, how they could benefit from invoice pay or actually data core e-payment yeah online. absolutely so in speaking with our customers a large number of them are very check heavy 50 percent or more of their payments are going out by check it's a super manual process uh, as i mentioned i spoke with a couple of customers who are spending four or five hours a week getting checks out the door um, this really eliminates the paper check and automates your other ap processes as well there's one simple workflow, sends checks, ACH, uh, card payments, wires out the door. Um, and we've really taken the difficulty of the process out of it by partnering with Envoice Pay and offering this integrated solution. Um, you no longer have to maintain your supplier data, uh, which is a pain in the butt to do when you have 500, 1,000 different suppliers and you're paying them by ACH. You gotta keep track of their bank data. Uh, they change their bank, which happens more often than you'd think. Um, and Envoice Pay will store that information for you. There, there are a number of different processes uh, that we'll display in this in this webinar and demo uh, that that could really benefit our customers. I remember talking to you earlier. You you were saying that a lot of different customers have different challenges, right? And so yep. it'd be really interesting to see what type of customers are signed on to this webinar right now and what kind of um, challenges are high priority for them. So we want to open up the polls right now to see which of these challenges are high priority for the customers that are online. We're going to give you folks a little bit of time to answer these questions. And this will also help um, with the Q&A because then we can kind of give you folks more in-depth answers to answer these um, to answer to your challenges that you folks have stated um, on the poll. So they are slowly trickling in. So we're gonna give a little bit more time, a couple more seconds. Okay. Still, people are, people are still ch adding more to their answers on here. Okay. So a lot of people stated that risk, control and visibility, and vendor data management are their high priorities uh, for their AP. So this is this will be helpful as we answer those questions and as uh, Jim um, goes into um, the demo to kind of show you folks how we can how data core e-payments can help solve those. Yeah, you know, the one thing I was going to mention, Jamel, is that um, mm -hmm. it's interesting how the results came through because fraud and risk is probably one of the, the biggest drivers that we're actually seeing in the industry is why people come to, to use a platform like this. And I think uniquely also for um, data core customers being in the industry that you're in, mostly in manufacturing industries, there was actually a report that came out um, last year in 2019 that the government produced that said, Manufacturing and construction are the two top industries that are experiencing the most payment risk or fraud uh, mm -hmm. out of any of the other industries that are out there. So um, it's kind of interesting to see how everything kind of came back with those type of results. I remember you talking about that article, um, that uh, report as well. You wrote an article on Invoice Pay's blog that go more in depth about that. So That's yeah, cool. so a lot of people that are on can go ahead to the website and take a look at uh, Jim's article that talks about that as well. 
So we're gonna go into the typical AP payment process. This is what some people may typically see. But Jim, as you're taking a look at this payment process, um, what are some of the missed opportunities that you often find when you're talking to customers? Well, you know, it kind of does tail to what Jeff had mentioned earlier um, when he was talking about the challenges that, that AP is faced with, right? So I think one of the, one of the missed challenges is that everything's always typically very reactive in AP and we're always heads down trying to trying to get the last transaction done and try to get out the door um, so we can clear our plate for the next wave of things we have to take care of. Um, and, and this process flow really kind of shows that is what we see with most of the organizations that uh, we engage with. Um, you know, you think about it in today's environment for um, the data core customers, um, they, they do have multiple payment types. As, as Jeff mentioned, there's check printing, there's ACHs that have to go out to the door, uh, and in some cases they do have card programs, but what that requires them to do is to manage so many different payment types, and in many cases different files that are going off to a bank, or maybe even just to their own local microprinter for them to be able to print uh, the checks locally, which need to be signed and stuffed and sent out the door. Um, and it, it really just requires an, an awful lot of hands-on, um, and particularly you know, as it relates to the ACH payments, there's again a lot of the uh, a lot of the time spent by staff collecting ACH information, maintaining it, making sure that it's accurate, uh, and then on the back end of the process, they still have to do all the reconciliation, right? So, and it's not just one type of reconciliation; it's it's multiples based upon all the different payment types. So there's lots of touch points that are happening through the through the organization, and really what we see is, I guess, to really answer your question is. What are the missed opportunities? It's a ton of process efficiencies by moving away from those manual transactional type process uh, to an automated one. And so we'll go into that new workflow. So there's that simplified payment process that DataCore ePayments provides. So can I ask both of you folks, um, both you, Jim and Jeff, how simplified is this? So we just went from a typical AP process and this is a simplified payment process. Can you folks tell us the benefits of this simplified payment process? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll, I'll kick it off with how it works in, in DataCore's ERP, and we'll get into further detail on that in the, the demo slides, which, which directly follow this. Um, but in the beginning of the AP process remains the same. You get uh, an invoice in, your AP clerk enters data into the ERP to create a voucher. And once you select items to pay in DataCore's ERP, the rest of the process is really automated. You select the items that you want to transmit over to DataCore ePayments powered by Envoice Pay. You click Send File. It defers a little bit in VB and CS. We'll, we'll get into that uh, shortly. And then uh, everything's over on the Envoice Pay side, and I'll, I'll let Jim explain what happens then. Sure. Yeah, so, and, and even taking a step kind of back before that, one of the things that we do through our process when we first implement uh, our customers is we we go through a process of onboarding all of your vendors. And the first step there is what we do is we do an analysis of all of your vendors to compare them to our vendor network uh, that we're paying um, today. Um, and what that provides us is that it provides us information on which of your vendors are already accepting payment on a credit card, which ones we know are accepting payment via ACH or the other payment types. Um, if there isn't somebody that's on the network, we actually go through a process of doing an outreach to those vendors uh, to try to get them to take some form of electronic payment, um, preferably by card, because there's a lot of benefit for that for, for you folks, uh, or ACH to help reduce the cost to get away from the printed checks that we do distribute for our customers. Uh, so that, that's a critical component to, to the equation. Um, and that's why what when when we look at the process flow here that we have laid out where you know Jeff had mentioned that. You, know, you, you enter the invoices into your ERP to officially voucher them, then you simply select them, and Jeff will show you what that looks like uh, in a moment. Uh, and then once the, the invoices that you've selected for payment uh, come into the ePayments platform, we again always are optimizing those payments to make sure that those payments are in the best interest of you uh, to help reduce cost and, and maximize rebates. Uh, the system does have the ability for workflow and approvals, much like what you have today in your manual processes with reviewing checks and doing signatures where you can do things like holds and stops or once you do approve uh, the payment files, um, what ends up happening is we automatically pull the funds from whatever operating accounts. And I do say that plurally because many customers will have multiple 
um, companies within their organization uh, that tie back to different bank accounts. So we can pull from the multiple bank accounts if need be. Uh, and then once we have the funds, we process the payments to the vendors based upon their preferred payment type. And because we're the one managing all the data as far as the payment types uh, and information, we become that first line of defense. So if there is anything that goes wrong in that equation, let's say as an example, uh, maybe the vendor forgot to you know, let us know that they have a new bank account that needs to be issued to, and that payment fails. Well, the flag goes off on our side, and we reach out to that vendor right away to collect that updated payment information. Uh, so there's a lot of process efficiencies. We like to refer to this as high tech and, and really high touch uh, with the combination of technology and services that we're providing to our customers. Thank you, Jim, for that overview of, of, of data core e-payments and how invoice pay handles and helps with that. So now we're gonna go into um, an even more detail of the simplified payment process. Um, and so Jeff will be able to show people that are on the webcast right now how to send a file from DataCore to invoice pay. So no, the no. product's available in both CS and VB. The workflow is very slightly different, um, but we'll get into that right now. So first in CS, uh, you go to the select items to pay screen, uh, you select the items that in the past you'd print a check for or generate an ACH file to send out. Um, in this, this bottom portion, you'd select e-payment, manually process e-payments, and then from there, you would go to this process e-payment screen select the process e-payments operations and that sends a file out to invoice pay they handle the payment of your payables automate the approval workflow and then once you're ready to retrieve information back from invoice pay and have it all reconcile in data core zrp you go to the complete e-payment screen and select the process e-payments operations button again and it pulls all that information back into the erp and very similarly in VB, you go to the select items, the pay screen, and then in the top right corner of the screen, there's this new e-payments functionality. And when you wanna submit items to invoice pay to be paid, you select the submit payment button, and then you pull information back into the ERP using the check status button. So really simple workflow in, in Data Core ZRP, and Jim will get into the weeds now on what takes place once it leaves the ERP before it comes back. So uh, while I'm kind of taking control of the, of the screen here, um, one of the things that, that I think is really important about the way that we've designed um, the solution together is that, that integration um, that, that Jeff talked about, right? So, you know, a lot of times with implementations of these type of solutions, there's requirements of your IT department to help set up with file exchange and so forth. Uh, with this, we've we've taken care of all that for you, so you don't have to uh, to worry about that. Um, can you folks see my screen at this point? Yep. Okay, fantastic. So I'm logged in currently to a, a standard demo site that we have that has uh, some of our base functionality that I'll walk through. Um, the location that I've logged on to initially here is, uh, is our home screen. And the home screen provides us with a, a host of information, um, which really I like to refer to it as the, the health of the program. And what I mean by that is it's showing some statistical information for us so you can see month over month uh, based upon payment types, whether you want to filter through the MasterCard payments, their ACH payments, your printed checks, um, and any other type of payments that are that we're providing for you on your behalf. Um, we're also showing some information about the, the payment broken out by count with things like month to date and year to date do dollars. Uh, again, broken out by the different payment types. Um, we're also showing some additional information down towards the bottom just in a, in a different view. Now, if I were to go back to that workflow example, um, when we talked about how the invoices were originally received at your locations, you physically entered them into data core, uh, you selected the ones you wanted to pay, and those files went off uh, automatically. Um, if you are taking advantage of any type of workflow within uh, the, the payment solution itself, 
uh, what would happen is there would be email notifications that would go to the individuals who need to review and approve those payments. Um, for those individuals in that email notification, they'll have a link where they can log on to the site directly. And what that'll do is that'll bring them to uh, this next tab that I'm coming into where it says payments. And what this is showing are batches of payments that have come through from DataCorp. Um, and in some cases, it's showing that some of these batches have been approved and some are actually still waiting for approval. So if I wanted to see the ones that are still waiting approval, all I have to do is just come in and click the little view icon here. And it's gonna take me to uh, the payments that I have access to that I need to review and approve. Uh, so maybe you could think of my role uh, in this scenario as the CFO or the treasurer. Maybe I need to approve these um, payments because they exceed a specific dollar amount. So there's all sorts of different workflows that we can incorporate into the solution uh, based upon those requirements. Uh, in this case, when I am reviewing the, the various payments, in this case, you can see that I have uh, three separate payments that I need to review and approve uh, for different vendors. Um, I can see, in this case, we have different currencies uh, that we're doing. I can even scroll farther over uh, and see what the payment type is as well. Now, if I do want to see additional information, like with uh, this first one, if I do want to see remittance information, I can click this little icon to see uh, all the remittance information. So in this case, with this with this one payment, there happen to be two, four, five different invoices that are actually being paid uh, in this particular uh, batch to that vendor. Now coming back, um, in order to approve or hold invoices, I can simply select all if I want to approve this as a complete batch and hit this approve icon. Uh, and by doing that, it'll kick off the the uh, process for us to be able to swipe your the, the funds from the associated bank accounts uh, to remit the payments to the vendors based upon their preferred payment type. Uh, if I did want to hold one, as an example, uh, I could go ahead and select it and hold it. Again, giving you that flexibility to say, wait, I want to pay this at a later point in time. Now, within the system, we are storing all information um, based upon a seven-year retention schedule for audit purposes. Uh, and within the application, we do have this history tab. So when I come into the history tab, this is going to show me all of the payments <coughs> that I've uh, that we've made uh, throughout the the course of however long you've been on the system. Um, it does give you the ability to go and filter these. So if I wanted to go ahead and, and filter by a specific vendor name, so I want to do some analytics, I could certainly do that, or maybe I want to do it by a vendor number. Again, all the columns here give you that ability to go ahead and, and search for. Uh, the information that you would like. Uh, again, from here, you can also see any of the remittance information. Uh, so like as an example here, uh, this happens to be a, a remittance for a MasterCard payment that I'm going to click. Uh, so when I select this, this is going to show all the um, remittance for this payment that happened to be done through a MasterCard. One of the things I'd like to always point out is that um, at the very bottom of the remittance, we do have instructions for them. So if they do have any questions in regards to the payment, uh, they're directed to us at Invoice Pay. Uh, so this really allows us to become that first line of defense for you uh, to eliminate a lot of those incoming calls, which are uh, really just typical requests to ask about payment information. Um, by the way, vendors do also have a view of their own, um, which we'll, we'll talk about as well. Um, the, um, the next tab over um, incorporates reports. Uh, so if you did want to do any type of further analytical reporting, uh, you can certainly do that. Uh, reports can be done in a PDF fashion or they can be done in Excel. So if you did want to run a report uh, as an oops, as an example, pardon me. Uh, if you wanted to run a report as an example, like with an outstanding check uh, report, you could simply create a date range that you'd want to select view. And what it'll do for you is it'll allow you to download that report and quickly view it and you'll be able to see all the information that's associated in this case with uh, you know, a few outstanding checks that are still waiting to be cashed uh, from a vendor perspective. Um, the last tab that I do have in the end, um, this really kind of shows all the heavy lifting that we do for you during the implementation. And the reason why I'm saying this, this is actually showing when we do that supplier onboarding and that outreach, um, we're, we're talking with the customer to find or the vendor I should say, to find out what their preferred payment type is. Um, and what this is displaying, like in this first vendor here, RexCorp, is just showing that their preferred payment type is um, our, the, the MasterCard. With that being said, though, 
they are also willing to take a printed check. Um, they will still take an ACH payment. Uh, and we also do have another type of a card program, which we call the invoice pay card. Uh, and that just offers uh, another card payment that has just a little bit of a lower interchange rate uh, that uh, the, the vendor gets hit with on the merchant system. Uh, and if they were doing any type of international payments, uh, this would be highlighted as well too. Okay. Um, so that's kind of it from a high level overview, kind of from, from a high level perspective. Um, Jamel, do you want to jump back over to the um, presentation so I could talk a little bit through uh, some of the additional process flow? Yep, I have it up right at this current moment. Let's, there we go. Perfect. So one of the things, um, you know, questions that always come up, are, okay, what are what are the timing of this? What What is the flow of the payments and how does this the whole thing work? Um, and I did touch on it a little bit, but to give a little bit further detail, the way the process does work. So let's say if today was Tuesday, yesterday, and you were reviewing the invoices in your data course solution uh, and you selected the items that you wanted to, uh, to, to pay. Um, once that file is transmitted into our system, again, if you're taking advantage of the workflow approvals that we have in the system, as long as you approve those payments uh, by 5 p.m. Pacific time, what we do is the following morning, we're in the wee hours of the morning, we're gonna pull the funds from whatever operating accounts that you give us access to for, for those funds. Um, those funds come into a temporary for benefit of account that we establish for each customer. So your funds are never commingled with anybody else, but they'll come into a specific for benefit of account established for you. And once we have those funds, we kick off the payment process to the vendors based upon their preferred payment type. So for the ACH and the um, card payments that are going out, there are emails that are being sent out to those particular vendors. Uh, and in the emails, there is some basic information uh, about the information and they do have a link that they can select, which will bring them into uh, a vendor portal for the most part, where they'll be able to see all the invoices uh, that, are, you know, all the remittance information based upon what is being um, paid to them at that given point in time. Uh, for the vendors who are accepting card, they'll also see a one-time card number. So the way that our card process works, it is a one-time card number for each of those payments. It's actually the most secure type of payment uh, that there is, uh, but it'll allow them to go into their merchant system and, and go ahead and process that payment right at, them, right, right at that time. Uh, we also do send electronic remittance files to the vendors who would like to receive an electronic remittance. So again, that kind of frees you folks up from having to do any of that that you may be doing today. Um, and for the vendors who are still accepting print and check, we are printing the checks and getting them out the door uh, via USPS first class mail. Um, the checks that we do print, um, those are um, those are secure checks as well too. So they're they're done through. Um, geez, I'm drawing a blank for a second here. Um, but they're uh, but they're, those checks are are um, what's the term I'm looking for, Jeff? <laughs> um, uh, drawing a blank. Um, <laughs> Positive payee checks, sorry about yeah. folks. There you go. <laughs> Long day so far. <laughs> but there are positive payee checks. Um, so again, if you are doing any of that with your bank, those type of fees that you may have today with your bank would be eliminated being the fact that we're taking that on for you and it's just part of the process. Um, so from a timing perspective for the vendors who are receiving ACH payments, um, it's typically the third day that they'll receive the payments uh, through the clearinghouse. Um, that is largely dependent upon uh, their banking side of the equation though. Okay. Awesome, thank you, Jim. And so when when customers are, you know, they have data cards, their ERP, they're gonna be able to have data core e-payments as a way to streamline their AP process. They also get a lot of support from the invoice pay side. Can you tell customers that are on the webcast right now what um, our op operation teams offer when they do, um, you know, when they do opt into data core e-payments? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, it mentioned, like I mentioned, it really starts in the very beginning of the process where we are going to try to enable 100% of the vendors to take an electronic payment. Uh, actually, in our world, for all the payments that go out to all of the vendors that, that we're paying, it's over 80% of all payments are in one form of an electronic payment or another, uh, whether that's on card or on ACH. So we're, we're always proactively doing it. Um, and it really goes down to what I mentioned earlier as well, too. When, when we receive the data that comes through from, from DataCore, 
we're always doing a dynamic review of that data to try to maximize the electronic payments that we're doing on behalf of our customers, uh, which is you know something that's extremely, extremely important. Um, and then on the back end, we're also providing payment support services. So when there are those failures that happen, because they're bound to happen, it's gonna happen, right? Bank account information changes, vendors forget to notify uh, us of that. So we're the ones that are taking on those challenging questions and from from the vendors themselves so again it's it's really going above and beyond just by putting a solution in place it's adding all these additional layers of services which really help drive the electronic payment adoption rate and also eliminating a lot of the issues or support calls uh, that the, that our customers ap teams do receive today and i'd like to add a lot of um, the cust a lot of the customers if they do um opt into data core e-payments and you know they are able to interact with a lot of people on the invoice pay team um, not only do we help them with their payments but even onboarding right so there's yeah. some people and some customers that have um, onboarded and have been enabled within 30 days right so oh, absolutely and that's yeah. actually one of the one of the big benefits we have with the way that the solutions have been integrated together you know, if we're, if we're working with another organization that has a different ERP that we haven't had this tight integration with, we do have to rely on their IT resources in order to make that happen to provide files. While we're flexible uh, with the file formats, it still does take some time. But in this case, we've eliminated all that risk, really, so to speak, by the way that we've integrated the two solutions. Can you go into more detail, um, Jim, of and, and Jeff, of, to add a bit, um, how is data court e payments because it's integrated because we're both integrating uh, together how much of a benefit does that put on the customer when it comes to simplifying their ap process yeah uh, so i mean we we have all the data that's uh, being collected about suppliers and the payment info um ap clerks are already entering all the invoice information in uh, we have the addresses that say where everyone needs to go. It's really taking everything out of the customer's hands. And then the actual payment of the payables and the approval workflow is automated as well. Uh, Jim, you want to go into further detail on uh, on that? Yeah, well, I mean, that's, again, kind of going back to what we, we've said before, right? It's, it's, it's the technology piece. It's the, it's the services component to it. Uh, and it's really the fact that be, being the fact that they are so tightly integrated, um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a simple flow. It's a simple process. Uh, there's a lot of efficiencies that we're bringing uh, and freeing up time really is what it boils down to. You think about all the time that that uh, somebody in AP has today with managing of the printing of the checks, making sure that the CFO is signing the checks or whomever is stuffing the envelopes, dealing with paper cuts and all that sort of fun stuff. Right. So. Uh, there's a lot that that is uh, that is you know from a benefit perspective that we bring to the table. Awesome. This is just a, a slide on the uh, a slide currently up right now that kind of went on an overview of the summary and the benefits that um, Data Core e payments brings to each customer. Yeah. So the next, yeah. you know, um, before you move on, Jamel, I think one of the yeah. things that is really important about um, this particular slide, if you're going to take anything away, because there, you know, there are process efficiencies, right? There's financial results uh, being the fact that you have uh, a reduction of, of costs going away from paper uh, to an electronic payment. And of course, there's this beautiful thing called rebates uh, that comes through the payments that happen on card. Uh, but again, going back to that polling question, reduction in, in risk and fraud, right? Mm -hmm. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Now, so one of the things that we're doing uh, with, with invoice pay is we take on that payment liability. Because we are collecting all the payment data, uh, and we're storing it in our systems, the onus becomes on us. So if there is any fraudulent activity, that's on our shoulders. So we are indemnifying 100% of all the payments that are going out the door to our to the vendors, regardless of payment type. Uh, quite frankly, there isn't anybody in the industry other than us that's actually taking that step and taking on that risk of liability. Jim, can you share us a story of a customer where we were able to catch that for them, if you have any? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it happens all the time. And actually, <laughs> <laughs> it happens even internally for us um you know so one of the biggest scams that is out there right now is business email compromiser that's referred to as bec uh, and it's uh, and it's really related around um ach payments and wires um, so you know fraud it was always really big with with paper check printed check it's, it's still the most common but there's a really big growing trend with it happening on payments that are associated with ach and, and wires um and 
we see it all the time where actually we get emails from folks trying to tell us um, that our CEO uh, is looking for us to, to make a payment uh, via wire and can you make sure you send the funds? I mean, so we even see it internally where we check that, but we have different processes in place as well too. I don't necessarily want to name customer names, but we did have something very similar happen where a customer was contacted and they reached out to us and said, hey, we need to have a payment made to you know XYZ vendor and through our checks and balances, we were to ensure that that wasn't going to happen. So payment analysis report. So a lot of customers may be asking, what is this? And I think a lot of people and a lot of customers, when they're taking a look at, um, oops, sorry, kind of jumped over there. Uh, when customers are looking at uh, payment solutions, they'd like to see something that kind of could create a business case for them. So Jim, can you go a little bit about what a payment analysis report is and how we provide that? Yeah, absolutely. So um, again, one of the great things about the, the integration that we have in the relationship with, with Datacore, we're actually taking a lot of the skin off of our off of Datacore's customers by uh, being able to, to do this. And what I mean by that is that um, for the customers that we're, we're talking with and actively engaged with, if they want to be able to see what, uh, what this analysis is, we actually have the ability to internally have the, the data core team pull the data that we need to do this analysis from within the ERP. Um, what they're doing is they're pulling basically a year's worth of history that'll have a listing of all the vendors with the total number of payments, total number of transactions or invoices that are associated with it, and the total dollar amounts, as well as the payment type. Um, and then once we get that data, what we do is we match that up against our payment network. And again, that goes to show us um, which of your vendors we are already processing payments to, whether that's via MasterCard payment or via uh, ACH. Um, and what that'll show us is what, really kind of where the economics of things start to, 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 to drive with this, because the payments that do happen on card do generate monthly rebates. <laughs> Um, and you know, for, for us with our customers, it's kind of unique. Um, while there are costs that are associated with the programs, uh, the analysis reports, what they'll show is what the, the upside of it is, right? So there's, I don't want to lose the fact that there's a ton of process efficiencies that happen with the leveraging of the system, but there is an economic component that does happen with the payments that do happen on uh, the cards with the rebates. So for the, for really for all of our customers at invoice pay, um, the, the rebates are by far exceeding the cost that are associated with the program. And that's really kind of what this starts to show. It'll show what the initial match rate is. And then what we do is we also show what the upside is by our continuous onboarding uh, of the suppliers through that supplier enablement process that we do. And the people that do do these payment analysis reports, it's not you, right? Who, who does the payment analysis reports again? So we, we, have a, we have a whole team of folks behind the scenes uh, with an invoice pay that does that. Um, so they they match initially what they're doing is they're matching up against uh, the MasterCard um, program that we run, our own internal database. Um, they're also taking certain things into equation when they're doing it as well too, because um, there could be scenarios where maybe customer ABC uh, has a has an Acme as a vendor and Acme is willing to take a card payment from them because their payments are less than fifty thousand dollars as an example, but maybe for the next customer the payments are a little bit higher than that. Uh, so we work in these different types of rules that we do when we look at it. Uh, we also look at total dollar amounts. If, if, if you're if you're spending more than a you know a couple million dollars annually with a supplier, well, that supplier is probably not willing to take a payment on a card. It's going to go to ACH. So we're there's a lot of variables that go into how we create it, and there's a whole team of folks behind the scenes that that do that for us. Um, one of the questions um, that came up is, what is a one card number, and how does it help with fraud and risk? Sure. So um, uh, a one-time card number is, is exactly that. It's a, it's a credit card number that is, uh, so it's not like you're, we're not issuing a, a traditional plastic credit card to our customers. Uh, the way that the one-time card number works is that there is a single card number that is generated for that specific payment to that specific vendor. Um, and what ends up happening is that that one-time card number can only be used for the total dollar amount that's associated with that payment. Uh, so once they do go into their merchant account and they enter in that one-time card number and the total dollar number, that card number can never be used again or recycled or anything like that. Uh, so, and it has to be used by that merchant account. There's another one that um, asked about vendor data management. What happens if a vendor has to change their data and how do you help 
how do you help um, get that information going for them? Yeah, so so with um, so again, kind of going back to what I showed with the remittance information, that the vendors would contact us. Uh, so let's say if it was bank account information that they wanted to change, they would contact us. Uh, they would need to submit us with the uh, with a copy of the check. They, there's a few other items that we have to be able to collect from them to do our checks and balances to ensure that it is associated with you know that this change is associated with the particular company. Um, mm -hmm. And we also, you know, a lot of times some of the things that do also happen is you might have a vendor that is accepting card payments one day and they say, nah, I don't want to do card payments anymore. I want to switch back to ACH. And again, we then go through that process of collecting the ACH information, the copy of avoided check, uh, and a few other pieces of data that we need to be able to cross-reference to ensure that there's no fraudulent activity that's going on. For control and visibility, um, Jeff or Jim, um, as you folks are listening, um, how can DataCore e-payments help with control and visibility and maybe even um, for companies how they can actually use this control and visibility to talk to uh, vendors and negotiate their terms yeah i mean negotiating terms is well that's that's always something that's uh that, that that's a, a big to do for for organizations um i think with the added benefit that we bring to the table with that is that um, you, you do have the visibility within um the, the payment solution itself to be able to see all the different payment types that we are collecting uh, on behalf of uh, on behalf of our customers, um, so they can be able to do some analysis on those vendors. Um, and a lot of times, what we will see is that um, some organizations will say, you know, by that doing that analysis, they'll they'll try to entice somebody to actually start to take a credit card payment uh, because maybe they they delay payments to them because they want to hold on to that money for a little bit longer. Uh, but if they'd be willing to take a payment on a credit card, they will they'll actually pay in. You know, two days versus 30. Uh, so there, there are ways to be able to leverage the data uh, to put in campaigns like that as you analyze that that information uh, to try to maximize on things like rebates um, or even vice versa. When is DataCore ePayments going to be ready? So the solution is ready to go. Uh, we've got a couple of folks signed up that we are going to start implementing, um, but. It, it is all ready to go in both VB and CS. Another question that we had um, as well is how can DataCore ePayments help with overseas vendors? Uh, yes, so um, that's really kind of the one of the huge benefits of, of our solution. We handle all payment types, including international payments and wires. Um, so, and it's all within within the one system so it's one workflow um, we have a process where we work with your international suppliers to uh, collect that payment information uh, that we need uh, so it, again it's it makes things really simplistic for you so you don't have to have multiple solutions multiple relationships with banks uh, we can handle that all in in one simple work, workflow for you folks another question that is uh comes from another customer that says my other question is does your system work with positive pay meaning checks have to be uploaded into our bank system yeah that's where we actually take take that away from from you folks you don't have to print checks anymore um when we receive the payment information from you about which invoices you want to pay we understand that certain vendors uh, are going to be taking payment on a printed check and we're actually part of our service of the checks that we print and send out for you on your behalf. Are, and we actually take it a step further. It's not just positive pay, it's positive payee. Uh, so we're taking it to the payee level, uh, which is one additional step, which is the most secure that you can do in that process. But it does eliminate you, uh, the requirements for you to have to work with your bank. Uh, and it will eliminate some of those, you know, the, any of those fees that you're, you know, inquiring to, or um, receiving today from those folks. Another question below comes in and it says, do you all process 1099s at the end of the year? You know, everybody, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, I do want to say thank you to everybody that is on this webinar who is, you know, bogged down right now in 1099 processing. Uh, we don't do that. Uh, that. That is not part of the service. Um, I always, it's funny, I was just talking with, uh, with somebody yesterday and they, um, you know, they're like, I can't talk too long because I'm in the middle of 1099 and I knew exactly what she was going through. Uh, but because uh, there's a lot of steps that are involved and so it's, it's a very manual process, but uh, now we're, we're not doing anything in that area today, unfortunately. Another one, another question comes in and it talks about ROI. Um, is ROI displayed on the screen over one year? Yeah, and, and yes. And you're asking if they're able to see the ROI. Yeah, we, well, we do track the, the rebate savings um, and we also do um, have a calculation within the application that'll, you can, 
put in like, um, so we look at ROI, well, everybody looks at ROI a little bit differently too, right? So uh, mm -hmm. there's different ways to calculate it and there's different benchmarks as far as what certain things cost. So when you look at ROI, um, like when we do our initial payment analysis report, uh, we benchmark that it costs on average uh, $3 a check to get a check out the door. And that's actually um, based upon an independent report from uh, the Associated Financial um, Professionals, AFP, uh, that they conducted a while back. But, um, but the, and that's just for getting the check out the door. That doesn't incorporate things like the reconciliation on the back end. Um, there's even costs with ACH too, right? So it's not just that transactional cost of the ACH payment that um, your bank can, you know, you know provide or that you, you incur. Uh, there's also the collecting of the payment data and all that sort of stuff. So uh, we do leverage certain benchmarks to show what the ROI is um, within the payment analysis report. Uh, and there's also some views of that within uh, the payment solution as well too. Another question comes in is, how are, are our vendors being charged fees for accepting these services? Or does our company charge the fees? Um, so the, the vendors um, are not charged for ACH. Um, there is an interchange rate for the credit card payments, much like any, you know, if you were to walk into Macy's or Stop and Shop or wherever it may be, when you process your card to, to pay for your goods, there is an interchange fee. Uh, so there is an interchange fee that the, the, the vendor is willing to take when they're taking the, the payment on the card. But other than that, there are no, no fees uh, and, to the vendors at all. And the interchange fee is just across the credit card industry. If you're accepting a credit card payment, you're paying an interchange an interchange fee. Exactly. So there, and this this one's even less than than the standard interchange fee. I want to thank Jeff uh, and Jim for being on the webcast today and educating us of how DataCore e-payments can help streamline your AP process. Thank you, folks, so much for joining. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.